Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today I'm going to walk you through the steps to change out the drive belt on our 2016 Polaris Ranger 900 XP. First thing I'm going to do is get this tire out of the way. Not absolutely necessary, but it'll make it easier for you to see how I do this. So, let me grab a couple of tools and I'll show you how to get it done. All right guys, this is gonna be a skill level one, so it's really not gonna be that tough. Let's go over some of the tools that you're gonna to need to pull this off. As always, you're gonna need a decent ratchet, good torque wrench, a couple of different extensions, an eight, a 10, and a 15 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter wrench, and then just a regular flat blade screwdriver. All right, as far as the parts go, if you would reference our parts diagrams, it explodes everything, shows you where everything goes, and how it comes apart, more importantly, how it goes back together. So, once you've got your tools and your parts together, we can go over there and I can show you how to get it done. All right, so we've got our wheel out of the way. What I want to do next is go ahead and tilt the bed back. Because what we need to accomplish is actually removing these three screws that are holding in the air box, where it can get up and out of the way and clear the uh, actual cover. And then we might, as Polaris uh, suggests, take off this zerk feeding as well, so it'll come out smoothly. Just three 10 millimeters, two up toward the front, and then this one from the side. What I'm gonna do now is loosen up the clamp, heading back to the, uh, the throttle body, remove that hose, just let it hang under it. Then we're gonna go for the front one, go ahead and pull it. And now, we can lift up the entire air box, and just lay it up top and get it completely out of the way. Now, with it clear, we're going to go ahead and pull those uh, eight millimeter screws on the cover. And of course, that one in the back's a little tricky to get to. We're just going to go right through that spring. How's that? Now, we can go and remove that zerk fitting, and that's a 10 millimeter. Now, she is out. All right, with the cover out of the way, what we need to do is loosen up the uh, the driven bolt right here on the sheave. You don't have to take it all the way out, but it's important you go ahead and spread the sheaves apart. That way we can take the belt, ride it up on the bottom, turn counterclockwise, and then just walk it off. And then it'll slide right off the front. All right, our belt is actually in really good shape. Now, what should you be looking for? Um, any type of cracks, on the inside or the outside, bend it kind of in a sharp bend like this and just look for cracks anywhere in here. And then do the same thing for this side. You know, a worn belt, typically it's gonna be missing teeth. It may be missing them on the inside or the outside. That's uh, kind of an indication that it got too hot and it started to disintegrate. There are some other conditions that may warrant having to replace a belt. If you get yours off your machine and you notice different burn spots, on either side of it in certain areas. That means that it is not engaging properly inside of the, uh, the sheaves and it's actually just spun in that one area without moving the machine forward. Um, a lot of times that'll happen by running it in a high range when you should have it in low range. Like if you're going up a really steep hill, carrying a load or pulling something. This one's actually in good shape and honestly I could reuse it. And if I were, it would have been very important to notice the direction of the uh, the printing here where it says Polaris. Now, if, if it comes off like this, it would need to go back on like that. If it was spun around for whatever reason and it was in reverse, you'd still need to put it back in the reverse because that's the rotation it was used to running. This belt is actually reusable, but I am gonna go ahead and install a new one because there's a couple of other things that you need to take care of before you put on a new belt. Now, if you were just reinstalling your original one, you wouldn't have to do anything. Just put it back on and it'd be ready to go. But if you were putting on a new belt, we actually need to clean up the sheaves. All you need is some uh, contact brake cleaner and then a Scotch-Brite pad, usually about the 360. Now, it's not necessary to take um, the, the drive or the driven one off. The driven one, since you've already got it loose, we can go ahead and pull it off and make it a lot easier to get to. Now what you want to note, is see that X right there and an X there. Those need to go back together in the same point. So just lift and it'll turn right off. Make sure you don't lose that washer on the inside. Now what we're going to do is clean it and scuff it up at the same time. Just spray it down. 
spray down your scotch Brite pad, and then just go around it. I mean, as you're doing this, if you feel some deep grooves in there, it's probably gonna need to be replaced. This one is nice and smooth all the way across. It just has a little bit of buildup on it, so to speak. So I'm just taking that edge off. What you're wanting to do is get the surface clean. You don't want any dirt, oil, anything on there, but you also wanna kind of rough it up a little bit. Like when you're honing a cylinder, you're putting in a cross hatch because when your piston and your rings are seating, they need that, that area to kind of rub against to where they make a good seal. Well, it's kind of what's happening here, except instead of the piston rings, we're actually, some of the rubber of the belt is going to get embedded into the, uh, the sheaves or the clutches front and back, and that's going to make it grab a whole lot better. See, if you've overheated your belt before, it's probably set up a glazed surface that is real slippery, and that's not really what we want. We want it to, to be smooth, of course, but we don't want it to be just glassed over because we want it to actually be able to grab and push you forward. So we're going to clean up both halves of our uh, driven clutch. With the drive clutch, you can do that in place, just doing one section at a time that you can reach on the inside and the outside, going all the way around. Rotate it a little bit and then just keep going. Then take a clean cloth, spray it down, and wipe it down. That way we've got a a good surface for the belt to ride in. Do the same thing with your uh, driven clutch. All right, as you can tell, I mean, this is nice and smooth. There are no deep grooves in it at all. And now it's got that kind of a hazy look because I've uh, scotch brighted it. Now I just need to do the same thing to the other section, or the other half, rather. All right, keep that washer in place. Let's find our X, which is right here. Find our other X. And it'll start off not being lined up, but when you rotate it back, there you go. There's one, there's the other. Now, let's go ahead and set her back up in there. All right, go ahead and start the bolt, but don't tighten it down yet. Just put it in maybe two, three turns. Spread it back open. And now we can install the new belt. All right, we do want to go ahead and put it like it came from the factory. Polaris going from left to right. Work it over your drive clutch. Bring it to the bottom. Turn it counterclockwise. Then rest it up in there. Now we can start tightening down your retaining bolt. And when you're doing this, it's going to be squeezing the belt and trying to push it out. So you may need to rotate it a little bit. All right, it's bottomed out. I'm going to put this thing in drive, and I'm going to have my assistant go up there and hold the brakes for me. Because we're going to set this to 43 foot-pounds. All right, so let's start putting there together. If you had any water intrusion, it will be very, <laughs> very visible in here. This one's in really good shape. Looks like it's had a little bit of water in there, but not enough to matter. Before we put it back on, go ahead and check the condition of that seal. There's a little rubber seal that runs all the way around. It's about that thick and runs all the way around. Make sure there's no tears in it anywhere. This one looks to be in good shape. So let's go ahead and get this cover back on. Get those eight millimeter bolts back in. Typically like to get them all started before I start tightening them down. Get them bottom out, that's enough. Now, let's go ahead and get our A-arm Zerk fitting back in. It's not necessary to bottom it out, but to have it be pointing towards you. That way, when it's time to Zerk, you're not trying to get the grease gun around to some awkward angle. All right, next, let's go ahead and get our air box back down to where it's supposed to be. Don't tighten it down yet, just get it started, and then get the other two in there. And now our uh, hoses. Make sure that forward hose is all the way flush before you tighten it down. Well, all right, guys, that pretty much wraps this project up. The only thing I have left to do now is just remount the tire. And remember, with your aluminum rims, you need to take them to 120 foot-pounds. Well, if you need any of the parts that we use to do this, come find us online and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.